Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new to the channel, a warm welcome to you and if you're returning and equally warm welcome to you and don't forget to please like, subscribe and share if you find the content that I provide useful. It's a free way to support the channel and uh, get the uh, uh, the video ranking up so that uh, more traders will be able to um, get this uh, quality uh, content and again if you're new just a quick reminder and even if you're not new um, the trading 180 process is combining the best of uh, fundamental and technical analysis to make really the best trading decisions right so um, let's get into the economic calendar and the week ahead zooming out a little bit one second all right uh, right so trading economics and we have um, uh, some news coming out apparently on, on trading economics when I went to the uh, three star high impact uh, there wasn't much high impact news as far as uh, from other countries but there is if you go to the two star so I included um, medium impact I guess um, what, I, what I think to be uh, something worth watching and keep an eye on so uh, uh, RBA Kent speech uh, central bank speeches are generally something that you should uh, want to potentially keep an eye on simply because uh, that uh, they uh, I guess confirm sentiment and what the Fed potentially is thinking and doing I say the Fed but central banks are thinking and doing so the RBA Kent speech um, may have uh, some uh, uh, some decent uh, information in there same thing with Bostic speech and you've got Euro group meeting um, on that's on Monday so a bit light on Monday Tuesday uh, from what I can see lots of manufacturing um, news but I think there's nothing really in here that I'm too interested in I mean there's Fed Powell speeches there as well and Christine Lagarde speech also as well is uh, is going to be definitely keenly watched um, Wednesday you've got RBA Ellis's speech uh, and then you've got the RBNZ, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, the interest rate decision, which is expected. The consensus is saying that um, it should they should raise half a, a um, half a percentage point, fifty basis points. The forecast from um, Trading Economics pretty much uh, saying the same. Um, and obviously, they're going to be a press conference. Uh, GDP growth rate is always important as well, especially for Germany. Um, that's uh, you know the previous was minus uh, uh, point three. So if they do disappoint and they have a, another quarter, even though it's not expected to be a negative, but if they do have another negative, then um, then that is uh, uh, going to be a, a technical recession, right? Um, Actually, I think that's the final one. Yes, yeah, the final. I think I think it might actually just be uh, confirming. Well, let's see. Anyway, so let's see what happens. You know, if they have the second quarter, then it will it will be a recession. And you've got Christine Lagarde's speech. Um, and why is that important? Really, it's important because um, if you have rising inflation and a slowing economy, pretty much that's what's known as stagflation. It puts the central bank in a bit of a uh, say a bit of a bit of very big problem it gives them a massive headache uh, as to whether they should um, you know high crates or not but they are continuing to high crates and we'll get into that a bit later uh, Christine Lagarde speech Bank of Japan Governor Karuda speech uh, FOMC minutes so lots of bank uh, speeches Thursday we've got GDP uh, second estimate um, so again I think we already know the second estimate um, on this so it's just basically confirming what we already know um, and the, the previous was from I think the, obviously the fourth quarter so I, I think it's the same thing with um, with uh, GDP with the, with the German GDP I'm not too sure 100% but I know with um, the Fed the, 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 the uh, preliminary data already came out as negative so I think the second estimate is going to be negative and it's not going to have too much shouldn't have too much of an impact because it's already been been priced in um, jobless claims you know employment is always worth um, looking at and uh, and so Friday we also have retail sales retail sales PCE price index right is going to be again keenly watched simply because um, of inflation worries right so uh, the um, 
PC price index is what the Fed looked towards as well when it comes to um, um, inflation and uh, you know uh, and, and that data. So um, some interesting uh, market potential market moving um, events if obviously they come out better or worse than expected and much better or much worse than expected. So let's see what happens. But let's get into the uh, the charts and starting off on the dollar index. The dollar index um, is just a measure of dollar strength against uh, you know the major currencies like the euro, the pound, and the yen. And uh, you know we were pretty much due a pullback if we actually look to see you know at the if we look at the, at the year to date what's you know gone on with the dollar. Um, we've literally just seen since the beginning of 2022 uh, this this you know this run strength and that is again due to um, the Federal Reserve really being ahead of the curve or one of the central banks that's been ahead of the curve especially when you think about um, uh, the uh, the euro for example uh, and even the pound they're in a better position than um, the UK economy so um, a pullback is due and this just adds basically confluence in case you do want to buy be a buyer of the dollar which I am a buyer of the dollar so uh, I'm just looking for confluences to get long and pullbacks really so uh, let's see what happens here so we can see if prices start to turn up to the upside um, then again that would be um, confirmation that the dollar is strengthening across the board against you know you know currencies like the the, the yen and the swiss franc for example if it, if it does pull back it just means that it's a bargain uh, a cheaper price to get involved in buying you know the dollar and uh, the dollar uh, fundamentally is uh, still the Fed Federal Reserve to plow ahead on half point uh, hikes undeterred by stock slump so the central bankers view tighter financial conditions as helpful volatile days are not an issue for the Fed to focus on prices so don't count the Fed uh, Federal Reserve uh, chair Jerome Powell to ride to the rescue of a faltering stock market not yet at least so the end of cheap money is coming um, and more expensive money um, uh, is 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 here, right? So Kansas City Fed President Esther George said Thursday that the market route was no surprise in light of the central bank's repeated caution that it will that it will continue raising rates uh, to cool the hottest inflation in decades. So that's really where their focus is. While she acknowledges equities are having a, t a rough week, her remarks in a CNBC interview did nothing to soften the tone set by Powell on Tuesday, who warned that officials seek a clear and convincing evidence that price pressures are retreating so that's not encouraging for investors betting on imminent exercise of a Fed put in uh, which central bank alters policy to prop up equity markets after a sharp decline so again the end of cheap money is coming to an end so going back to the you know the dollar index I do think that the uh, the dollar should want to strengthen I don't know whether it's going to turn around here um, or here nobody knows uh, for sure because I say if you do know then put all your money on that trade nobody knows it's just a probabilities game so um, I do think that at some point prices will continue to uh, go higher not too sure where but we've got to take take chances right we've got to take the trades uh, if they set up around here obviously not taking the dollar index but maybe the dollar yen dollar swiss and i do think that the dollar is still a buy although i do think that the upside is going to be capped on the uh the uh, the dollar as other central banks are also uh, suffering with uh, inflation issues and may start to look to hike rates so um they will have to and they say they but the market will have to revalue what the dollar is uh, exchange rate will be against other uh, currencies that are now starting to potentially look to high rates like the Bank of Japan surprisingly enough um, uh, uh, there's you know word on the horizon that they could become less dovish and even the uh, the Swiss franc uh, the Swiss National Bank so let's see what happens um, I think in the short term the dollar still a buy medium to long term there are potential selling opportunities on the dollar as strange as it seems there could be and that would be more of a what's known as a convergence trade and um, just a quick reminder if you want to uh, get all that information and get really in-depth analysis the trading 180 um, mentoring starts enrollment opens on the 6th and to the 10th of June and so um, if you are looking to join, you can get access to 
the fundamental analysis spreadsheet which basically plans out uh, the, the strongest versus the weakest currencies but also as well you'll get to understand um, the currency value cycle amongst many other um, tools that we use to understand why currencies that are ranked one two and three are likely to appreciate or in fact currencies that are ranked one two and three um, may start to devalue right and the same thing with devaluation just because a currency is ranked six seven or eight which typically tends to be you know devalued or depreciating um, there are opportunities to actually buy six sevens and eights on a revaluation ends where you're looking at buying bargains so um you know, there. Uh, I'll teach you all of that, as well as the uh, our great discussion room where we uh, talk about um, just trading in general, um, as well as you know trade setups and so much um, information in here. And um, as an example of uh, the type of videos that I provide, uh, I provide daily and weekly chart analysis um, for the for the members, which is not available on YouTube. Um, uh, well, the majority of it isn't anyway. I might just uh, edit a few videos here and there and put it out there on YouTube to kind of help traders. But generally, we've got um, hundreds and hundreds of videos um, on the um, in the private members area. Um, and uh, yeah, so you get daily videos as well as uh, mentoring as well as our weekly um, live calls. So again, just... Uh, um, a reminder that enrollment opens on the 6th of June and closes on the 10th of June. Now, getting back to the charts and looking at the dollar yen. Again, dollar yen has come back down into the uh, nice, nice demands. And I was saying that that 127 area was a decent area to look for potential long trades. And we could see the market start to auction. We'll traders would know is a bit of a ranging market and this is probably what I'm expecting to happen if not then uh, prices could come down to that one to one area um, that has been cited but let's see what happens I do think that there are some decent buying opportunities right now if you do want to get long on the dollar providing that the fundamentals are still in place from a sell trade perspective and trying to buy the uh, the yen you've got couple of uh, supply zones right here and here to get involved in but generally you want to look for the highs trade around the highs and lows of auctions rather than um, you know the, the, the middle area and you'd have to really believe that the yen was a bargain at this price at these prices in order to get uh, um, uh, long on the yen um, on short on the current on the currency pair or believe that risk off is going to you know be prevalent and uh, that money will flow into the Japanese yen but for me still buys um, looking for buying opportunities uh, dollar Swiss dollar Swiss decent um, zone price to come down to I was saying last week I didn't really want to buy at highs wasn't interested in buying at highs at all and obviously there wasn't any demand there for that price for the uh, for the dollar uh, Swiss that's definitely seen as an expensive area we've now created We've now created uh, some supply right here. This was seen as a as a bargain area for the Swiss franc and expensive for the uh, US dollar. Now this area here is interesting for a uh, buy trade and a bit more of a pullback. So um, which is what I was waiting for from last week. And really, um, I was looking at the uh, fair. Uh, moving fair values or what traders would know as moving moving averages but in fact they're moving fair value and um, understanding that this is the monthly fair value uh, moving fair value and uh, really and truly i like to trade and look for trades when prices are start to either bounce off of that area or below the uh, monthly moving fair value above that is going to always be an expensive area so um these are trades now this is an area where if you're interested in going long uh, it's decent long uh, opportunity and if you do want to go short then that is a decent area to look for any kind of uh, short trades on that dollar Swiss um, dollar CAD dollar CAD and um, this was uh, actually a really good trade um, which ended up working out quite nicely um, in the private group we ended up getting involved uh, some of the guys end up getting involved right at the top 
right here, which ended up being a stop hunt and a really nice trade for a good few hundred pips. So uh, decent. Um, and we kind of called this again. You can look at last week's uh, videos. We were talking about you know going short and in and around here and in the private members group. Um, this was something that I planned out a few weeks ago, and prices actually you know uh, worked out really nicely. So um, yeah, let's uh, from from a from a from a buying and selling perspective, I suppose a supply and demand perspective. We have uh, now a bit of a new uh, supply zone there and um, looking for potential buyers if you're looking to buy the dollar um, if you're looking to buy the Canadian dollar I think that's a decent area to look for any kind of uh, short trades as well I do think as much as the dollar is um, quite dominant I do think the Canadian dollar is competing against it so we should enter into uh, an auction uh, between this 137 area and the 127 is probably down at the uh, the round number area so I do think that the, the, the upside is going to be capped on this so decent uh, short trades if you're looking for any uh, um, a trade on this currency pair um, looking at the New Zealand dollar US dollar and uh, commodity currencies at the moment haven't been doing so great but this week you know you get you're getting a bit of a pullback on that New Zealand dollar um, again looking at you know this being an expensive area I was always, uh, you know, cautious. I'm not really trading this pair anyway, but um, you know, you should always be cautious and wait for, you know, if you can wait for uh, larger pullbacks because that represents a uh, uh, better value. But I can, I'm going to get rid of this uh, supply zone to buy the. Uh, if you're buying the U.S. dollar, and I think now there is um, demand starting to um, occur here, and uh, in fact, I'll pretty just drag it all the way up. So there is demand coming into uh, coming into play, but uh, I think that the path of this resistance should be still to the downside as the uh, the dollar um, in a risk off environment as well. And I talk about risk off, but there are definitely uh, problems when it comes to you know, for, for example, the Russia Ukraine war, uh, China slowdown and lockdowns and COVID, um, and many other things, inflation problems. And uh, really, the, the question to be asked is who's the, the, the dog with the least fleas? Who's the best of the worst? So I think out of the two, it's hard to tell, but I think the dollar being the more dominant um, economy, I think should, um, if you're looking for any kind of short trades, um, should kind of prevail. But there is obviously demand coming in here. So that is a decent opportunity to get long if you do feel like that is the bottom. Pound dollar, so pound dollar again was due a pullback. I think you know selling at this area right here, uh, this one two four uh, again was it was quite expensive, um, and uh, there was I think there was a decent trade setup this week uh, on the uh, pound dollar into this area. I think it ended up being um, a bit of a CPR. I think I went over it on Wednesday's uh, private members. Uh, group call but um but yeah as we see right now i think anything in this zone is going to be decent very decent for a potential uh sell trade and i do think that there is uh, maybe a level just above it uh, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna stretch it but this area here this area the uh one two five fifty to one two six fifty i think is decent for a uh, for a short trade um and i do think that the dollar should um, uh, be stronger than the pound or appreciate over the pound um, because really the uh, you know the UK's inflation rate surges to a 40 year high and the cost of living squeeze pressures governments and bank and the Bank of England to act and shocks hitting Britain harder than most advanced economies right so um, in the UK um, you know inflation is um, really really hitting um, uh, uh, the public and I guess there's a there's a, a cost of living crisis um, that is going on which potentially could um, send I guess the UK economy potentially into a recession sooner uh, than other economies but um, but yeah so uh, unless the Bank of England really get a grip on uh, rising inflation then um, then I think uh, the the economy is is going to be a bit worse for wear like I said sooner than um, some of the other economies so um, the dollar 
the uh, the US I think are in a, in a, in a better position than than the bank of uh, than the bank of England and the, and the UK economy hence the reason why you're seeing this start to happen yes they are hiking rates but as I always you know saying you probably heard me say this before it's the dog with the least fleas who's the best of the worst so I think for me my bias is still to continue shorting to the downside let's see what happens in and around this area um, to look for short trades if you are looking at long trades this is actually a decent area to look for um, the uh, the pound the pound buy in that zone um, moving on to the euro dollar so euro dollar again uh, the dollar kind of pulling back um, any supply zones are decent areas to look for potential short trades the 106 to 10650 area is a decent area to look for short trades the euro um, is looking to continue to hike rates we have ECB Visco says July perhaps right time for first hike and again this is to stop really um, or to try to um, prevent inflation getting out of hand and and really the euro as well from uh, from going you know too far to the downside right because what compounds the inflation is uh, a devalued currency so they need to try to stem uh, the the euro from going uh, lower and compounding inflation problems and devaluing too much because uh, there was talk of a parity a one-to-one -one, um, euro to dollar peg so um, when you have uh, when you have that it's uh, not great for the euro um, and actually it's better for the uh, for the dollar because the dollar is expensive and uh, a, 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 an appreciating currency uh, should have the effect of um, uh, stemming inflation so at the moment I think the, 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 the dollar is winning the currency war and um, I think the uh, European Union uh, European Central Bank the ECB have to do something about the devalued um, uh, euro so they're going to talk up the euro but for me it's still shorts so any you know shorting opportunities around here if prices do come up to the 108s I think that's going to be a, a very nice area to look for uh, short trades I think the, the, the euro will be a buy if the conflict in Ukraine um, and between Ukraine and Russia do start uh, does start to um, uh, resolve itself but it doesn't look like that's happening anytime soon so um, continued shorts for me um, moving on to the Australian dollar US dollar and the Australian dollar US dollar um, again commodity currency similar to the uh, uh, New Zealand dollar US dollar <clears throat> haven't been doing well against the uh, the US dollar but I do think that potentially there is a buy uh, here somewhere but I probably really want to see um, prices move to the upside you know a bit stronger take out a level of uh, supply before moving back down and I do think that that might be the uh, the bottom for the uh, Aussie dollar um, and the, uh, the the RBA are looking to high rates so um, this potentially could be a decent uh, buy not a pair that I'm interested in, but uh, if you are interested in it, I do think that that demand zone hasn't really, you know, shown itself to be a strong area of demand just yet. That supply zone sitting right on top of it, but if prices do, you know, go higher, taking at the level of supply, then the pull back into that area, I think that's going to be decent for a buy. If you are looking to buy the Australian dollar versus the US dollar, fundamentally, it doesn't not really a, the, the best pair for me. Um, and if I am looking to buy it, then um, I'm probably going to buy the uh, dollar over the uh, Australian dollar on, in a risk-off environment. Um, looking at the Aussie yen, the Aussie yen um, is establishing again a bit of a risk. Uh, I say risk off but we're on a risk off environment but we did establish a bit of demand and I hesitate to put this demand zone here, but. I'll put it there anyway it's not it's not really typically how it should be drawn but there is you know demand there especially on like a lower time frame like the uh, like the one hour for example uh, or intraday any intraday uh, time frames there is some demand there prices have moved several hundred pips from this low to this high so there's about 300 pips is moved so uh, from a daily demand zone perspective it's not the greatest zone but um, I think it's moved enough to be able to you know, if you want to be, um, you know, trade the uh, 87 area, 88 um, to 87.50 zone on an intraday uh, 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 trade, then that is actually, I think that's a, a decent, I would say. Um, from a uh, buy or sell perspective, 
Typically, you would want to buy the Japanese yen in a risk-off scenario, but I do think that the Australian dollar, for me, is 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 presenting itself to be a bargain down at these uh, lows. So my bias is still to the upside. Buying the commodity currencies in a risk-off um, environment um, is is my bias. Uh, so yeah, let's see what happens there. If you do want to buy the Japanese yen, um, probably have to buy it up at the uh, 92 area, the 92.33 areas before looking at any kind of uh, short trades. And gold, finally gold. Gold did bounce off of this uh, this demand zone, All right? And I think gold is still a buy, um, especially when you consider, um, you know, inflation worries. And um, so yeah, I think that's where we are when it comes to gold. Uh, there was an interesting article that was talking about the Bank of England um, uh, gold trades, a uh, rare discount in the sign of central banks selling. So gold in central banks vaults traded below one dollar, traded one dollar below London benchmark rally in the dollar has put emerging economies under pressure. So gold stored at the Bank of England has been trading at unusually low price and a sign that central banks may be shedding some of their holdings, which is uh, which is quite strange. My question would be um, who's who's doing the buying? Who are they say who are they selling to? Because um, it doesn't look like inflation is going anyway um, away anytime soon. So um, for me, my bias would still be to the upside. I think gold is a bargain. Bounced off of that eighteen uh, one uh, one thousand eight hundred level, eighteen hundred level, and uh, I do think if prices come back down to this zone, that I think that's going to be a very nice area to look for potential. Uh, buying opportunities intraday but um, the the one thing that is um, I guess keeping gold um, uh, uh, prices down is the fact that the uh, the dollar is uh, still appreciating so as the dollar appreciates typically what you should see is gold you know devalue right but it's if if the dollar starts to devalue then you should see gold you know go up and if it starts to devalue as well as um, you know risk off um, increase inflation increasing etc then this is going to look like a an absolute bargain so um, interesting piece on the uh, on the Bank of England selling gold but I think um, uh, from as a, as, a, as a safe haven play it should still be a decent buy but if again if you do want to be a buyer um, that was the opportunity I think it was what was it, on Monday if you do want to be a seller of gold and still continue to get short then this area here is actually really nice a nice setup for a potential short as well as just the above zone as well anyways guys um that's it for this week i uh, hope you have a great trading week and uh, take care until the next video